Greg Horton from Kansas City. I'm going to go over a number of the different quality indications for the snap-off pin system. This is very useful for a variety of things, not only fracture fixation, but arthrodesis type procedures. One very useful application is for hammer toes. Typically, I will do a proximal interphalangeal joint fusion, and this implant is very useful in that regard. A longitudinal incision exposes the proximal interphalangeal joint. A small oscillating saw is used to create appositional surfaces for the proposed arthrodesis. A K-wire is then inserted from the distal aspect of the middle phalanx into the proximal aspect of the middle phalanx. A slight bit of flexion of the toe at the level of the PIP is desirable. This can be checked radiographically. Depth gauge is then used to identify the length for the snap-off pin, then utilized to estimate the length of the implant. The double hash on the K-wire corresponds with 30 millimeters. The K-wire is then removed. It's helpful to make a small track in the proximal phalanx. This aids in insertion of the implant. The 1-9 implant is then passed from the distal aspect of the middle phalanx, proximally crossing the proposed arthrodesis site, and then driven into the proximal phalanx. The breakoff point of the pin should be proximal to the distal interphalangeal joint. This can be confirmed radiographically. This pin will be slightly advanced. The pin will then be snapped off. When doing this, one needs to provide a fulcrum at the base of the snap-off point. The radiograph shows the final implanted snap-off pin. This is a low-profile interosseous pin that provides compression across the arthrodesis site and maintains motion of the distal interphalangeal joint. One indication for this snap-off implant is a distal metatarsal osteotomy for bunion correction, such as a chevron, is another useful application for the snap-off pin. The medial eminence has been exposed following a capsulotomy. Care is taken to avoid excessive stripping of the metatarsal head. A chevron-shaped osteotomy will now be performed. The osteotomy has been completed and translated. Provisional fixation with a K-wire is achieved. At this point, the residual medial eminence is maintained. A guide wire is placed across the osteotomy site. This can be confirmed radiographically. The depth gauge is then utilized. The reading on this is 24 millimeters. The 1.9 millimeter snap-off compression pin has been inserted. This provides not only compression, but solid fixation of the osteotomy site. Prior to snapping off the pin, it is advisable that a radiograph be obtained. The pin is now snapped off. The residual medial eminence can now be removed. When snapping off the pin, it is advisable to move the pin in just one plane rather than toggling it back and forth. Also providing a fulcrum at the base can be advantageous. The snap-off pin provides a headless, low-profile compressive fixation for osteotomies such as the distal chevron.